how to pick the best CPU cooler for your AMD Ryzen or Intel CPU. Guys, I'm today testing the Deepcool AK400 CPU cooler, a really nice value option in my opinion. For which CPUs can you use it and for what CPUs should you maybe not use it? Guys, my usual test setup is testing with different CPUs. In this case, AMD CPUs, uh, one without the X3D cache and one with the X3D cache. Since uh, if it can handle the CPU with the X3D cache, you should have not uh, no problem with the smaller ones that run cooler. Both CPUs are still AM4 with the seven nanometer process. The newer AM5 should run cooler since they go on the five nanometer process. And what I like to do is first test the CPU in idle. In this case, the 5800X3D, since it's running a little bit warmer, we are drawing about 30 watts of power. We're just sitting on the desktop, we screen record and uh, capture the readout from the data. And we're at around 43 degrees Celsius. I'll show you in a second what that is in Fahrenheit. And the RPM are pretty low, below 500 RPM. And you see that on the fan curve. I'm always using the standard fan curve to make it comparable. So light desktop use should be no problem uh, with the CPU cooler, even if you have the CPU with the X3D cache. So I tested at 21 degrees Celsius room temperature. That's approximately 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And I also always like to test with the Arctic MX thermal paste. There's the MX4 or the MX6. It's uh, what thermal paste you use is really up to you, but I like the Arctic. I've a long time customer of theirs. Uh, but regardless, let's quickly look at the result. I made one tiny test mistake uh, with the X3D. I didn't calibrate the fan curve after switching the fans. So that's why the RPMs are so low in this case with the X3D and it runs a little bit warmer. Um, you could imagine if I had uh, done a calibration, the RPMs would be slightly higher and it would maybe run a little bit cooler, a tidbit. Um, that was the one mistake that I did here. But since we already know that desktop use is no problem for the CPUs, why don't we just quickly start a game and really put some load on the system to do a little bit of a real world test scenario, you know, cyberpunk very intensive for the graphics card. If you have a powerful graphics card that can suck up a 200 watts easy, that creates heat in the case. And also it uses more of your CPU, puts more load on the CPU, especially the X3D, which is what we have in here. And I'm just gonna let the game run for 10 minutes. Uh, meanwhile, I record everything in the background. Jumping ahead 10 minutes to see these results, you see the temperature gradually start to ramp up. We are now at 63 degrees Celsius and approximately 1,500 RPM. And the CPU is power draw hovers around, yeah, let's say around 55, 60. And uh, the fan curve, like I always like to say with the X3D CPUs, if you have an X3D CPU with that uh, AMD cache, the gaming CPUs, I would always slightly adjust the fan curve to the right because uh, the standard fan curve often is not set for these X3D CPUs. So that's not a thing of the, fa uh, of the cooler. And if you would adjust that to the right, obviously the RPM would go down and the CPU would run a little bit warmer, but that's entirely up to you and what preference you have. Here you see the results. I'm using RTX 4070. Uh, that's a very nice graphics card. It's reasonably efficient, but uh, if you put a lot of load on it or you want to generate a lot of lots of FPS, then obviously it uses also a lot of power, which creates heat in the case. But uh, the Deepcool AK400 cooler has no problem with that. Um, only thing, since I always use the standard fan curve, the RPM is slightly too high for my taste. I would run the CPU maybe at 65 degrees Celsius, maybe even 70 and thereby dropping the RPM maybe to a thousand, maybe even below a thousand. And uh, once you hit the set that max temperature in your fan curve, then the RPM will be lower. And uh, yeah, I mean, the deep cool gets a thumbs up. But I would say, uh, that's my personal conclusion, the AMD X3D cache CPUs, they get pretty warm. So if you can, I would definitely get a bigger CPU cooler 
just in case some people they might not have an air-conditioned room a lot of people in at least in germany we don't uh, air conditioning is not super common so if it's very hot in the summer then yeah the cpu cooler could handle it but then even if you adjust the fan curve the rpms would fluctuate you know during winter time super low during summertime a little bit higher that's up to your preference but as a rule of thumb the x3d cache cpus uh, get the biggest cooling solution you can, maybe even water cooling. That will definitely not harm. It's I think it's a good principle to a little bit oversize the cooling just in case. If you have a AMD 5600X uh, or non-X3D uh, cache CPUs, even the new AM5s, I would definitely say that's, that's a goal. You can definitely use that cooler. Um, so that's my conclusion. X3D cache, maybe something bigger no x3d cache you're just perfectly fine that's my conclusion and if you want to see more cooler reviews and more benchmarks let me know maybe you want to see a particular water cooling from arctic or from deep cool then maybe i can get a hold of that and i see you as a subscriber in the next video